Sports Talk here on SiouxSports.com. I'm Tony Bonifero, joined alongside Sioux Greyhound defenseman Jacob Holmes. Jake, thanks for joining us today. How are you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, bud. Good, so, yeah. obviously, let's get this out of the way. Congratulations on uh, the big NHL draft that just kind of passed. Uh, must have been pretty exciting for you, I would assume. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, any chance you get one step closer to playing in the NHL, your childhood dream, it's it's very exciting and uh, it's an awesome opportunity. So obviously you went to Dallas in the fifth round. Was Dallas a team that spoke to you a lot in the pre-draft process? Uh, not overly, no. Um, it was kind of a bit of a surprise, but uh, I'm just really thankful for the opportunity that's uh, being given. So talk me through your draft uh, draft day experience. Did you celebrate with yourself? Were you with your family? Were you with, were you with your friends? You know, we hear a whole bunch of different stories. So kind of talk us through your day. Yeah, no, I uh, I actually went to the gym in the morning. Uh, I was talking to my trainer a bit there and uh, then came home and started watching it. Uh, it started at 11 a.m. Um, I was, you know, surrounded by family and friends for the rest of the day pretty well. And, you know, it was it was really exciting to hear my name called. Did you have any expectations as to where you might go? I know, obviously, with this season um, not happening, you know, there were some reports that I saw you going as high as potentially the second round and other ones later, you know. So did you have any idea uh, when you might go? Uh, not really, and I didn't really have any expectations either just because of, uh, you know, not playing and not really showing what I had to offer that year. And, um, yeah, no, no really, no real expectation. I feel really bad for you guys. A lot of kids in your, you know, in your place or in your situation, right? It seems like their draft year is really the year when they really can show their game and kind of show their development and their growth. Obviously, with there being no season last year, what was that like for you to to kind of have to experience that? Yeah, for sure. Um, I just kind of, you know, focused on myself and stuck to what I could control, and that was staying in the gym and staying on the ice and being ready whenever we did get the call back. And, you know, unfortunately we never did, but, uh, you know, I felt like I was ready at any point that we would have had the chance to go back. So what part of your game did you get a real chance to work on over this last year? I would say my defensive side of my game. Um, you know, my 16 year old year, I really worked on it and, uh, I feel like it carried into my off season and also just, uh, for one of my skills I worked on was my skating. I feel like my skating's really, uh, taking a big jump and I'm ready to, uh, you know, show the improvements I've made. That's awesome. So I want to talk a little bit about kind of growing up and kind of how you got into uh, hockey and, and kind of your, 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 just your journey to get to the NHL. Uh, well, hopefully the NHL, but you grew up in a small town, Alliston, Ontario. Uh, talk a little bit about Alliston and, and uh, just growing up there and what, and how you got into hockey. Yeah, no, I, uh, I'm, I grew up, grew up in Alliston. Um, I live on a potato farm, uh, you know, lots of farms in the area, but uh, no, I played, played double A hockey in uh, TNT Tornadoes. That's the team that we have in town. And I played that till about minor Adam where, and then made the jump to triple uh, A and uh, I played for York Simcoe express triple A and also uh, the Barry Colts triple A organization. And uh, I finished uh, in my minor midgets year with York Simcoe and, you know, was lucky enough to get drafted by the Greyhounds. Wow, a potato farm, eh? Yeah. That, yeah. That's great. I used yeah. to, when my uncle, this is just a little bit of a sidebar, my uncle, when I was a little kid, he used to pick me up all the time, and I used to love digging for his potatoes in his garden. So that was one right of So, yeah, that was great. Good, good um, stuff. Yeah, you uh, you ended up playing in York, you said, correct? Yeah, York Simcoe. Yeah, York, York Simcoe. What led you to go there and play uh, and play in York? Yeah, just, uh, you know, the organization itself, I feel like it's, you know, one of the best, if not the best, uh, minor hockey organizations out there. And, um, you know, they have so many good things to offer as a young player wanting to, you know, take the next step in your career. Were you, you were the captain for them, correct? Yes, I was. So, obviously, you know, you didn't grow up with a lot of these kids, right, that you were playing with? And how many years were you there? Uh, in New York Simcoe, I was there for my last two, so Major Bantam and Minor Midget. Yeah. Um, I I grew up with some kids, actually, that okay. uh, were playing there just because of where I live. It's in between, and, um, you know, we had a we had a really close team, and, you know, we had we had a lot of a lot of good hockey, and, you know, 
some good memories were made for sure. So your draft year, you know, you're, you're coming in, obviously you had high expectations. I'm talking, sorry, I'm speaking of the OHL draft. Yep. You know, obviously the Greyhounds were sitting there and you ended up with the Greyhounds. Were you surprised to be taken by the Hounds at the time or did you kind of have a little bit of an idea that they were interested? Yeah, it was, it was kind of a surprise actually. I, I, I did have a good chat with them uh, a couple weeks before the draft, but you know, it, uh, they were just reaching out and whenever I did hear my name, it was, you know, really exciting, especially knowing the history of the organization and, you know, how well they developed their players. So as a kid from, you know, down in uh, central Ontario, you know, obviously you said it was a little bit of a surprise to be drafted by the Sioux Greyhounds, you know, obviously it's kind of worked out for you so far, but your initial reaction, did you know a lot about the city or about the Greyhound organization at the time? Yeah. Um, I didn't know a whole lot about the city, but I did know a lot about the organization. Um, you know, they are, they're, uh, you know, one of the best in the CHL and uh, have developed so many great players over, you know, ever since they came into the league, really. So, um, no, not a whole lot about the city. No, I actually wasn't, I'd never been to the suit before, uh, before the draft. So, so you come up here, you know, you, you move up to the Sioux, you come to your first training camp. Kind of talk to me what that was like, you know, leaving home and, and having to come up to a city. And obviously the Greyhounds are a pretty big deal up here. So was it a little bit of culture shock for you or, or were you able to kind of adapt pretty well? Yeah, it was it was very exciting, you know, coming into my first OHL training camp. I didn't really know what to expect and, you know, uh, you know, established some you know, good relationships, with guys on the team and coaches and, also the fans too. The fans are, you know, best in the league, and um, you know they're really passionate about their hockey. So, uh, no, it was it was a really cool first training camp, and then you know into my first year was really exciting as well. So, talk about your first year a little bit. Obviously, there were some ups and downs, as every sixteen year old has coming into the OHL. Kind of talk about you know your first season with the Greyhounds, just generally, you know how it went, um, and how you think you kind of progressed throughout that year. Yeah, um, coming into the league as a 16-year-old, you you have no expectations really. You just you know you want to prove yourself and uh, show everyone you're there for a reason. And I feel like uh, you know at the start of the year I was a little timid and you know I didn't really play my game that I used to play in minor midget. But I felt like uh, a big turning point for me was when I went to the under 17 World Hockey Challenge. And uh, when I came back from there, I had you know, the confidence and the edge to, you know, play with the puck and hold on to the puck longer. And I felt like I only got better as the season went on. We see the Sioux Greyhounds have a pretty good coaching staff. And, you know, everyone knows about Coach Smith up here in Sioux St. Marie. He's, he's a Sioux boy. He kind of grew up here. He's, you know, he, he, he's in charge of the defense for the Greyhounds. Kind of talk about Coach Smith and what he brings to the uh, Greyhounds organization. Yeah, for sure. Uh, me and Smitty have a really good relationship. He's, uh, he's you know, taught me so much ever since I came into the league. And, you know, I from video and then to the on-ice stuff at practice and even behind the bench, you know, he's always chipping in and adding stuff to your game and, you know, really helping for you to be at your best. And then Coach Dean. Um, you know, Coach Dean, when he came to this suit, not a lot of people knew who he was, right? And he kind of came in with uh, – with big expectations, you know, everyone knew who Drew Bannister was. Everyone knew who Sheldon Keith was, right? And then all of a sudden, for Coach Dean to come in, you know, he didn't have the high-profile name that those other guys had originally. Just kind of talk about him as a head coach and how he approaches the game. Yeah, for sure, Deaner. Uh, he approaches the game very professionally, and you know, makes sure you know everything's running smoothly in the room and you know on the ice as well. He's passionate about the game, and you know, he's passionate for our success at the end of the day as well. And I feel like he gets the best out of you every time you're on the ice and even off the ice. So talk about, I want to talk a little bit about a game day experience for you. So for people who aren't, you know, part of the Greyhounds or have never played hockey at this level, I know a lot of you guys have a little routine. Do you, I'm assuming you have a game day routine as well? Uh, a little bit. Last year, well, two years ago, I guess, it was a little hard because I was still in school. So sometimes we play during the week, but... Uh, in the off, on the weekends and stuff, I, I had a bit of a, we had a, a ritual and yeah, yeah, for sure. Can you talk a little bit about what your pre- pre-game routine is? Yeah, no problem. Um, we have morning skate before every game. Um, I go to the rink, you know, get on the ice, you know, feel the puck, you know, feel how I'm 
you know, ready for the game. Um, and then after that, we had uh, Muyo's lunch after the morning skate and, uh, you know, get us ready for, you know, coming back later on that sa- this afternoon. And uh, when I went back to the house, it was, I, I nap, I, you know, I take advantage of the nap time. And then uh, about, you know, two hours, two hours, 15 minutes before the game, you go, go to the rink and, you know, you start getting into the mindset, get ready for the game and, you know, get ready. It's so, it's so funny because, you know, I mean, I played football at college and things like that. And, and I hear from all these hockey guys, we used to build at Greyhounds growing up about how every hockey player likes to take a nap before a game. And I just, it, it, I love it because it just goes to show the sense of calm. It's, it's almost like a calm confidence, right? That hockey players have, yeah. because it's one of those things I'd be so excited. I don't know how people can nap before games, but I, you hear it all the time. So that's great. Do you have yeah. any, um, do you have any pet peeves or any superstitions that you, uh, that you kind of follow before games? Not, not overly. No. Uh, one thing I do is I, you know, take first 10 minutes of when I get to the rink to go and, you know, tape my sticks and, you know, just sit out on the bench and, you know, hang out with uh, other guys on the team. Oh, that's great. So Jake, I know you're, you're a humble guy, but you know, there's not a doubt in my mind that had there been a hockey season this last year that you kind of would have been drafted potentially a little bit higher, right? I really do. You've grown already a few inches, haven't you? You've already put on some extra muscle and and things. Yeah. I, uh, when I left the Sioux, I was about, uh, just under six, one and, uh, 178 pounds. And now I'm about six, two, six, two and a half and 200 pounds. So, Oh, that's great. Yeah. So talking to Greyhound fans, guys, you people who watched you two years. I mean, it's, it's sad to say it was almost two years ago. Two two years ago. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, so what are they going to see different when, when the Greyhounds take to the ice in October and Jacob Holmes steps on the ice, what's the main difference that, What's the main difference they're going to see in his game? I think it's just uh, my confidence for sure. One is, you know, I'm coming back as coming into my second year, but more of a third year guy in the league. And, uh, you know, I feel like I can do more with the puck and, you know, have more confidence in myself to make plays that, uh, you know, I wouldn't really make in my 16 year old year. And then also my defensive end. Um, I've really taken strides to work on that. And you know, I'm ready to show the improvements I've made there as well. You've always been an offensive guy kind of growing up, right? You were a little bit of an offensive defenseman and you, you were really good with the puck that way. And it was, it kind of frustrated me reading some of the pre-draft, you know, I, and you, you often wonder who's writing this stuff about you, right? But, you know, one of the, one of the critic critiques that they had about you was, um, was your offensive game actually. And, you know, that you didn't score enough, those types of things. Um, Kind of, but again, I, I don't think that's a, as big of a deal because I think you are working on your defensive game. But do you have any personal goals? You don't have to tell us what they are, but do you have any personal goals that you've set for yourself going into this season? Yeah, I have. I have a few. Um, it's just more, you know, more little things as you know, a player and stuff to you know focus on and you know, really uh, bear down and you know, help out the team in as many ways as I can. And I think uh, back to what you're saying about the critiques and stuff on my offensive game, I think that was just from, you know, not having the confidence in my first, in my 16 year old year. And, you know, I may have shown little bits of it, but, uh, you know, I'm going to show it way more consistently this year. Yeah. I honestly can't wait to watch you play this year. I, I, I have goosebumps just thinking about it. Cause I do, I think, I think that Dallas got an absolute steal with you in the fifth round. And I think you're, you know, you have a, a ton of potential and we're going to see some great things from you. So, yeah, I, I agree with you, you know, kind of coming into the OHL as a 16 year old, that's not easy to do like that. That's tough. What was your biggest adjustment personally? I would think probably being away from home is one, you know, you're always, you're used to coming home after the games and stuff and, you know, being with your family. But um, one thing on the ice, that was a really big difference is the speed. Um, you used to being one of the faster guys on the ice and, you know, c- coming into the league, you know, there's a lot of bigger, stronger, faster guys. Cause you know, there's a bit of an age gap, but um, you know, I felt like you know, I, I, I adjusted pretty quickly and, you know, uh, learned a lot of things that early on in my season. So the Greyhounds, let's talk about them a little bit going into this season and your team and, and the expectations that the team has. 
obviously you guys have lost quite a few forwards um, going into this season. And with so many overagers, you don't really know who's going to stay and who's going to go. But this is going to be, um, you know, I don't want to say a younger team, but, you know, you're, the defensive side of the puck is going to be one of the deepest in the OHL. Uh, kind of talk about what your expectations are for the team this year, if you have any, and just kind of your hopes with the season. Yeah, for sure. I feel like, uh, you know, I feel like the whole league's going to go through an adjustment, not just us. It's it's going to be a younger a younger group of guys coming in. But um, I know when my, it was my sixth year of the year, I was excited for it, right? So I feel like we're going to get a lot of excitement in the room and, you know, a lot of good energy from the young guys. And, you know, I... I don't really know for expectations as much, but just, uh, you know, playing together and, you know, I feel like if we play together and, you know, not take anything for granted because we haven't played hockey for a year and a half, I think we're going to we're gonna do a lot of good things. I'm really excited for training camp. I really am. You know, there's going to be some battles for some roster positions this year. And I think with a lot of these kids, you know, a lot of these young men who have sat out a year, who knows how they've developed, right? So yeah. I think it's going to be really interesting and really fun to watch. Obviously, you guys have heard that training camp is going to start. Uh, can you kind of give us what, you, what you've what you been told so far about that? Yeah, training camp's open uh, beginning of September. So, you know, go up to the Sioux uh, end of August and, you know, jump right into it and, you know, get back into game-ready shape. And then you have to go to Dallas, you were saying, right, in uh, early September? Yeah, so development camp in Dallas is uh, not right at the beginning of September, just about a week, week and a bit in. And then also there's a rookie tournament in uh, Traverse City that uh, uh, I'll be playing in as well. Have you ever been to Traverse City before or been to that rookie tournament? No, no, I haven't. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. It's, one of the, it's great. And you're kind of lucky it's only three hours away from Yeah. You. But, yeah, not uh, too far. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's great. It's it's amazing, and it's nice that they actually have that in Traverse City. So I just want to get to know you a little bit better. Let's. We're gonna. I'm just going to play a little rapid-fire game with you just to kind of, you know, let, let people in Sault Ste. Marie see a different side of you. So All right. uh, just to kind of get to know you personally a little bit better. If you want to pass, you can pass. That's fine. Right. What's your favorite type of music? Uh, country, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like it. That'll blow yeah. you. Who's, <laughs> who's, your favorite, who's your favorites right now? Who are a couple of your favorites? Ooh, uh, I'd probably say Luke Combs is right at the top. He's, uh, yeah, he's, that's great. he's probably the top guy. So. And, you, and you're going to Dallas, so that's awesome. That'll blow yeah. Up. Lots of country music down there. That's yeah, great. Uh, favorite food? Uh, probably steak. Steak. I'm a big steak guy. So. Do you have a pregame meal? Um, just pre-game meal? It's usually just pasta and chicken or pasta and meatballs. Um, if hockey doesn't work out, what do you want to do with your life? What do you see? Where do you see yourself? Yeah, um, I feel like I've always had, you know, uh, an interest in being an architect or, you know, uh, you know, even an electrician too. Um, I'm really interested in that as well. Favorite restaurant in Sioux Saint in the Sioux? Louis. I'd say. Oh, obviously, yeah. 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 Um, what was one misconception that you had about the Sioux before you came here? Uh, probably just how big of a city it is. Um, I, I really didn't know too much, and uh, I was surprised at how big, how big of a city it was. You kind of already answered this, but the biggest adjustment playing in the OHL. Yeah, um, speed and size of the other players, for sure. Did you have a welcome to the OHL moment? Um, I wouldn't say so, no. Uh, just, I I got hit in one of the opening games, and it was kind of like, okay, this is this is what we're going to have to deal with for the next year. So, um, especially, I came in as, you know, I wasn't, I was not even close to the size I am now, and, you know, I was... I was really uh, thin, so you know that was a bit of a, a shock to the system. Yeah, no question. Yeah, <laughs> I know, and that's the one thing, right? So for a lot of years, I work in the visitor penalty box, and you know, seeing some of these twenty-year-olds, and you're up there against these little sixteen-year-olds, right? And it, yeah, it, it's terrifying. It'd be scary. Um, actually, that's one thing I want to ask you about because this is something that we've talked about a lot on our show. Is we covered a lot of hockey last year, and a lot of it was non-contact hockey. 
and you saw a lot of kids kind of developing bad habits, right? Developing habits of starting to skate like this, right? With their head down and, and things like that. And you kind of mentioned hitting. Do you think there's going to be a big adjustment period for a lot of these players to go from absolutely no contact at all to full on contact after not having it for almost, you know, a year and a half, two years? Yeah. Um, you know, it's tough to say because I know the ice time that, uh, you know, I've been getting on is, is yeah. full contact and, you know, it's just more really game like situations. But yeah. I mean, if, if you weren't able to get on the ice with full contact and scrimmage situations, yeah, it could, it could be an eye opener again. Who do you model your game after? Uh, I like to uh, compare myself to uh, Ryan McDonough, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, you know, really solid two way guy, and you know, leads by example on that really good team. Favorite arena, t- or, or sorry, favorite rink to play in that's not the Memorial Gardens. Uh, I would say probably uh, Budweiser Gardens, so London. Or uh, the Sad Lawn Arena in Barrie. That's my that's my hometown uh, hometown rink, and I get to see all my family and friends. So, toughest player you ever played against? Uh, toughest player. <laughs> I know I'm putting you on the spot with some of these. But no, 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 no. That's all right. Um, <laughs> you know, there were so many really good third and fourth year guys to play against in the OHL, but uh, one guy that I actually got to play with on Team Ontario, and I feel like you know he's. One of the best players in the league, Shane Wright, and you know he really, he really, uh, really plays well every night. So probably him. What do you know about Dallas and the Dallas Stars organization so far? Yeah, um, you know, just uh, the history, and you know, two years ago they had a really good run, and you know, a really strong team, and you know, they're they're full of talent. So I'm really excited to you know be a part of the organization and you know, hopefully make an impact in the uh, coming years. So I just, and I, this is just a curiosity question, because obviously I've never been drafted, but, you know, what does it kind of look like after you're drafted? Do you get a phone, like, you know, obviously the NFL draft is what everybody sees, right? And we all want yeah. a phone call and all that stuff. Kind of talk us through how that happens. Do you get a phone call before your name pops up or do you see your name and then get the phone call and kind of how that worked for you? Yeah. Um, I'm not too sure how it went for other guys, but for me, it was uh, I saw my name pop up and then got a phone call about 20 minutes after from uh, oh, wow. the general manager. So um, that was a really cool, uh, really cool phone call to answer, especially after that uh, rush of emotion. Absolutely. Were there any? Uh, was there anything that was required of you since the draft, or is it just basically this is what we need you to do, this is what we want you to do, and we'll kind of see you in September at the. Uh, at, at camp yeah i've uh, i've been in contact with lots of people in the organization and they've really uh made me feel welcome and uh you know just talking about uh the upcoming development camp in september and also uh some strength and conditioning stuff for the summer that's great yeah so, okay, uh, you know you've been honestly with this you've been on with this now for almost uh, 25 minutes so i appreciate this but was there anyone kind of growing up in your life kind of talk about your family and just kind of the impact that they have on your career still to this day, and especially growing up. Yeah, um, I have uh, two younger brothers, and uh, my parents, obviously, all four of them have been you know, really supportive of me uh, during my early you know, career, and even in minor hockey. And um, they're always there for me to drive me to the rink and you know, make sure I was on time. And even now, uh, you know, just reaching out and making sure I'm doing good and, uh, you know, just you know, rooting for me. Do your brothers play hockey? Uh, so my first younger brother, he's yeah. uh, he's just he's turned 15, um, and he plays hockey in TNT. And then my youngest brother, actually, he does not. He's He likes ball hockey. He's not yeah, too yeah. big on skating, but he likes farming, though. He's really into farming. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So um, do you have land parents here in the Sioux, obviously? Yeah, I billet parents. Your billet parents, sorry, yeah. yeah. Kind of talk about your billet parents and, and what that experience has been like for you, kind of moving in with a brand new family. Uh, I actually had a pretty unique situation. Um, I live with uh, Cole McKay and his family, so okay. yeah, yeah. it's uh, I you know I can't thank them enough. They made me feel at home right from day one, and you know uh, I've built a great relationship with uh, Mike and Cindy, and also Cole and. You know, it's uh, 
you know, I'm really lucky in the spot I am. That's great. You know, Jake, we really appreciate you doing this and taking some time to do this. I almost, again, I have so much sympathy for players in your situation and what you guys had to experience this last year. Obviously, the most important year of hockey of your life, and it kind of gets taken away. But it seems to me that you kind of used this year, you know, in the best possible way that you could to improve your game, get bigger, get stronger. Do you think that this could be a blessing in disguise down the road? Uh, I really do. Um, I think that uh, I used it to my advantage and, you know, really put uh, put a lot of work in to become a better player. And, um, you know, I'm really, really excited to get back on the ice and show those improvements again. So my final question that I have for you, and this is something we ask everybody, so I'm going to put you on the spot with this one. But if you had to order pizza from Sioux, anywhere in Sault Ste. Marie, where do uh, where's the best pizza place that the uh, McKay slash Holmes family like like to order from? <laughs> oh wow, uh, there's two spots, two yeah. spots that we order from consistently, and that's Aurora's and Fratelli's. Uh, two good calls. That's yeah, right. yeah, that's awesome. yeah. Well, well, listen, Jake, we really appreciate you doing this. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I think it was. Imp- I think it's important, right? Because. You know, you missed a big year and, you know, the fans are just dying to get hockey back here. You know, the passion that we have for it and the passion that the city has for the Greyhounds. You know, you're a great ambassador for this team. You have been a great ambassador so far. And I I really do. I think the future for you is extremely bright. So thank you so much for doing this. And uh, hopefully you can come back on during the season when, uh, when you're uh, tearing up the OHL and you know, getting a call to maybe go to the World Juniors if you're lucky. So, <laughs> yeah, hopefully, uh, thank you very much for having me. Yeah. No problem, Jake. Best of luck, and uh, we'll definitely see you in September. No, that's Thank great. You. Thanks again. Yeah.